Hello everyone. In this sixth lesson of how to make your first game in Unity tutorial, we are going to explore some tags as well as collecting our spinning coins. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So, I mentioned the word tags in the little introduction here, and the reason we have to use tags in this is so we're able to define what each thing is. At least in this part of the tutorial, we just need to define that this is the player. I know we've named it player, and I know we've set a player control to this particular cube. However, we also need to be able to define it as a player when scripting. So to do that, all we need to do is head over to the inspector panel, making sure we have the player selected. And here you'll notice the word tag and it's currently untagged. If we click that drop down menu and then click on player, that now means that we can differentiate between what is a player and what isn't when it comes to some C-sharp coding. And you'll see the reasons why we have to use tags a little later on in this tutorial. So how do we get around to making our player collect these coins? Well, it's actually very simple and I briefly mentioned it in the last video and that is to use a trigger. So let's set up a script which allows us to collect each one of these coins. So let's right click, create C sharp script and we'll call this coin collect and we'll open that up in Visual Studio. So these two methods that we have right here, the default ones, we don't actually need these in this script. So we can actually delete everything. All we should have now is just this class and the namespace section at the top. So we need to create a method which allows us to create a trigger so we can collide with it and collect it. So in order to do that, we need to type void and the method we're going to use is on trigger enter. Now, if we hit return, it will automatically set it as private and it will add these inside the parentheses. This says collider other. And what this is doing is it's creating an extra variable for us. And that variable will come in handy when we need to work with triggers. This method does not need to be private, so we can delete the word private and just have void on trigger enter. So the way this works now is we are going to write some lines of code which allow us to detect if it is indeed the player which has become the trigger. So we can use this variable that's declared here by default in the parentheses as the variable that we need. Now you can change it if you want to, you can change it right here. I'm going to leave it as default as other, but you can change other to anything you want. Just remember if you do change it here, you will need to change it in the script itself. So to detect whether it's the player colliding, we have to say if, and in brackets, other, and remember if you've changed it in the parentheses up there, make sure you change it here dot tag and this is all lowercase equals and then in quotes player and open curly bracket so what we're saying here is if the tag is indeed player then we execute this next line of code and i think this script is going to be something that we will write in this tutorial and more than likely complete um, maybe next tutorial tutorial after you'll find a lot with scripts you go back and forth so many times creating and expanding and making them better but for now we just want the simple ability to collect those coins so what we'll do is we will make the coin disappear from our scene as soon as we've collected it. We won't completely destroy it and get rid of it because we might be able to recycle that coin just to kind of save on resources later on. So we'll say this dot game object and you'll notice I've used a lowercase g and an uppercase o here. The reason being is because this is not declaring a variable. If you remember that we had it in one of our previous scripts, it was a capital G and a capital O, we don't need to have that here. It's a lowercase g and an uppercase O. 
I'm sure I mentioned it a couple of tutorials ago, capitalization is important. And this is why I've done it this way in this tutorial to really illustrate the difference between capitalization. So this dot game object dot set active and in brackets false and semicolon and save the script. So realistically, in its simplest terms, that's what this script will do. It will set the game object as inactive if we collide with it. Now there are a couple of other things that we need to do to get this working. So let's head back into Unity and let that script compile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to just this one coin for now. So I'm going to basically drag and drop this script onto our first coin. And then I'm going to tick is trigger. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the player and we need to add an extra component to the player just so as it determines that it is a character and the thing we're going to add is a character controller. So to do that we need to click on add component, we need to go to physics and we need to add a character controller right there. You could also click on add component and search manually just by typing char and it would appear right at the top. So we now have our character controller applied. We don't need to do anything else. So if we press play now, we'll be able to collect that first spinning coin. So it should disappear as soon as we collide. Now, all the other coins will not disappear as we can see which is a little bit of a pain, but here is a neat little trick to add the script to all of those all at once. Let's select all the coins. You'll notice that even though we have all those coins selected, we still have the option to change all of these components. If we were to select the player and the coin, we wouldn't be able to, because as it says here, components that are only on some of the selected objects cannot be multi-edited. That means because all of these items are pretty much the exact same, we're able to modify the same components on each. So firstly, let's tick is trigger on all of those. Let's click on add component. Let's go to scripts and you can see there is our coin collect script. Nice and easy. So let's click on that. And each one of those coins will now have that coin collect strip attached to it. So if we press play again, we'll be able to collect each one of those coins. Done. No more coins available. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate why it's important to have a tag here. So if we go back into the coin collect script and let's say if the tag is equal to player three. So obviously that tag on our player is just player. It is not player three. So that now means that we'll be able to not collect them as we can see. However, if we were to completely remove that if statement, it would technically work because we're not even checking if there is a tag on the object that has collided with it. Now, although you can do this, it's not advised because then anything that wanders around, maybe you've got an enemy or something, could pick up those coins. So it's worthwhile always having a tag check in this kind of script to make sure you have the correct thing that's collecting those coins. So it needs to have that check. And let's let that compile and let's double check that this still works. Collecting our coins. Perfect. So in the next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we're going to have some on screen UI. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a counter at the top that will tell us how many coins we've picked up throughout the course of our game. That should be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you guys in that next tutorial and you'll probably see a couple of other things flying around at the moment at the top for different videos that I have and you'll probably see that little subscribe button in the middle. Hopefully guys I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.